I'm on a mission to complete a secret long-term goal on my blaster in the newest MapleStory server, Hyperion. But in order to reach this goal, we have a lot of challenges to overcome. This is a story about how I challenged myself more than I ever have before. This is Blasted. We just wrapped up a few more Link skill characters and a few minor upgrades to gear in pursuit of 90% IED to take on our first challenge in this series, Chaos Root Abyss. Before jumping right into it on day 5, the day it became available to clear, I leveled up a few explorer magicians for their shared Link skill empirical knowledge. This provides yet more IED. Nothing else at this point stood between me and my goal of clearing these bosses, so it was now time to jump right in to CRA Three Doors. And it's time to discuss the strategy behind bossing in general, something that hasn't been too relevant until now, binding and bursting. Binding refers to using a skill that will freeze a boss in place, effectively making it a training dummy for 10 seconds. It won't be able to attack or move at all during this time. You'll know whether a skill is a bind or not because upon use it will place a cooldown timer underneath the boss's HP bar. This timer indicates the time until it can be bound again. There's also another level of bind that we'll learn about later in 6th job, but obviously we don't have that yet. When a boss is bound, it's then time to burst. Bursting refers to using all of your skills that increase damage, augment your attacks, and have a long cooldown, as well as using your attacks that hit hard and have a long cooldown. The cooldowns for these skills are usually not longer than 3 minutes, as that is the standard time between burst phases in the current meta, but some skills and classes as a whole deviate from this standard. Blaster, of course, is one of the classes who deviates. Most of Blaster's burst skills have a 2 minute cooldown instead of a 3 minute cooldown. This is either better or worse depending on the situation, but since we're going to be soloing everything, a 2 minute burst class is the better of the two, so I guess we got it good. Blaster's burst is a bit more complex than other classes, which likely doesn't come as a surprise. I'm going to demonstrate this and try to talk you through it as it happens. Keep in mind this isn't necessarily the most optimal strategy, but it is researched a bit, and it's gotten me through plenty of difficult bosses with ease. Step 1. Use Primary Burst Skills This is somewhat of a nebulous concept. I don't think people use the term Primary Burst in any context. For me, this is using my burst buffs from longest duration to shortest duration, and these skills are lined up on my F keys to make it as straightforward as possible. After that I place Resistance Infantry, use Hammer Smash to refresh its debuff, use my special skill ring, and then it's time for the damage. Step 2. Use damage skills. First is Bullet Blast. The macro for loading bullets is super handy to get this skill out as fast as possible. Then it's Gatling Punch, after which the special skill ring effect has likely worn off. This is where the bulk of the burst damage comes from, but there's another step after this. Step 3. Spam NRL. Seems obvious, right? Why is this even a part of the burst? Well, if you've been paying attention, you might have noticed that I completely skipped using Cannon Overdrive and Rocket Punch in the first step. The reason for this is that these skills provide absolutely no benefit to Bullet Blast or Gatling Punch. Because of their short duration, they're much better off saved until after those skills have been used. With Cannon Overdrive and Rocket Punch active, our NRL damage skyrockets and we can absolutely wail on the boss. The issue is, binds will have worn off by now, so you almost never do quite as much damage during this second part of the burst as you potentially could on a stationary training dummy. This is where the concept of theoretical DPS versus practical DPS comes into play, and one of the reasons why DPS charts are dumb. During this second half of the burst phase, the dynamo gauge will be cooling off almost immediately after a bunker buster. You want to try and use Bunker Buster every three NRLs, canceling it with Bobbing, Weaving, Hammer Smash, however you prefer to animation cancel it. This is an important skill to build early, as Sixth Job will be providing a new augmentation to Bunker Buster that makes it even deadlier during this burst period. You want to be comfortable with Bunker Buster before reaching Sixth Job. The first of these bosses we're fighting is Pierre, notoriously difficult and reliant on strong burst. 
Upon entering the fight, Chaos Pierre will begin dropping hats and smacking you around with his umbrella. Getting hit by the hats will petrify you, requiring you to mash the left and right arrow keys to escape. If the bar above your head reaches the right side after being petrified, you die. Getting hit by his umbrella will reverse your controls or knock you back and stun you for a second, depending on the animation. This is what's known as the purple hat phase. Chaos Pierre's main gimmick is the three hats that he can wear. Purple, which is the default starting state, red, and blue. After reaching roughly 80% HP, Pierre will change hat colors and give the player a hat as well, unless you can time an iframe right when he transforms. The chosen hat is RNG, and if the hat you receive matches Pierre's hat, attacking him will heal him. If it's a different hat, you'll do double damage. This is the hat switching phase. For the remainder of this phase, Pierre will swap between either red or blue hats, and then back to purple repeatedly, giving you a random hat color every time. If you die after receiving a hat, you'll lose the hat and deal normal damage no matter what color Pierre is. All you can really do if you're weak is wait until you're wearing the opposite hat and deal as much damage as possible, but once you get him down to 30% HP, he'll split. This is primarily what we want to avoid. When split, both blue and red-hatted Pierres will be active, meaning you can't kill both of them because you'll always have one of those hats on. The fight isn't too complex outside of the split mechanic, so all we really need in order to clear Chaos Pierre is enough burst damage to deal 15% HP damage. With the opposite hat color, this results in 30% damage to the boss, which is just enough to skip the split phase. If you deal this damage within a tight enough window, he won't be able to split before he's dead. Nowadays, this isn't too hard for most classes to achieve after you reach about 10k stat, and it certainly won't be difficult for Blaster. All we have to do is whittle his health down throughout the hat switching phase, and once he's near 30% HP, we wait for the RNG to get the opposite color hat and then fully burst him down. This is the only strategy I ever use for Chaos Pierre. If I don't have the damage to deal 15% HP with the opposite color hat, I'll usually just upgrade gear until I do have that damage. If you wanted to fight him after he splits, the best option would be to die immediately after the split happens so you lose your hat, but I've never successfully pulled off this strategy. Dude, do I dare? Blue hat? Do I fucking dare? Usually, you want to get him as close to 30% HP as possible before waiting for the opposite hat RNG, but I naively thought I could brute force it. I want to point out again that I'm misusing Bullet Blast during these bosses. I brought it up earlier, but I still didn't understand how it's properly used at this point, and you'll see this throughout all of CRA. Try not to cringe too hard. If I had used Bullet Blast properly, it's likely I would have killed him with that burst. I knew it was- I knew it was a lot to ask to do it from like 70% HP. Right, here we go. And with Chaos Pierre down, we get his treasure chest drops. The most important of these are the pieces of mockery. Collecting five of these will allow you to use them to turn in for CRA pants. This is the first piece of real CRA gear that we've earned on this blaster. Our true level 150 set begins, but we still need three more pieces to complete the set. The next two CRA bosses are relatively easy compared to Chaos Pierre. Chaos Crimson Queen is who we're fighting next, and she has some pretty straightforward mechanics. Chaos Crimson Queen has four faces, each representing a phase of the fight. She always starts out on the Wrathful phase, and in Chaos mode will immediately ignite the player, dealing a certain amount of damage every couple of seconds. She can stack this fire effect on the player to deal more damage. The only way to cleanse these flames is to die or get hit by her Fire Breath attack, which deals damage based on a formula. We have enough HP and defense to tank this flame breath, but some classes might not. One interesting thing about Chaos Root Abyss is that none of the bosses have a potion cooldown. This means you can spam potions, and it's actually beneficial to do so, especially with the fire stacks. During the Wrathful phase, she'll also claw at you, dealing some minor damage and blinding you if you get hit. 
Every 40 seconds, roughly, she'll randomly switch faces, entering a new phase of the fight. Joyous Crimson Queen is a pretty simple phase. She'll summon large cracks on the ground that suck and slow you, inflicting continuous damage. And in Chaos Mode only, she'll use her Vacuum Breath to pull you towards her. If you get too close, you'll be one-shot. The next of the four phases is the Simmering Crimson Queen, where she will summon either hearts that deal 45% HP damage, or a mirror that has 550 million HP and will seduce you if it's not killed fast enough. This will cause you to walk towards it until you touch it, which kills you instantly. In this phase, her claw attack locks your skills. Finally, we have Sorrowful Crimson Queen. She'll summon a red bubble around her that causes damage reflect, and after about 10 seconds, it wears off. After this, she'll zombify the player after a random amount of time. Zombify will cause you to take damage from potions instead of healing from them, making this zombify status very dangerous. It should usually be avoided with either an iframe or hero's will. If you get hit by it, you can just avoid using potions until it expires. These phases are pretty self-explanatory. The Sorrowful phase is usually where I like to burst since she doesn't have a lot of attacks in this phase. You can set up for burst right before the red bubble ends and then bind. There's no bonus damage to be found like in the Chaos Pierre fight, we just have to deal with the mechanics and try to survive. Starting out the fight, I immediately burst. In most bosses, I often choose to burst before doing anything else, but this is not always the case. I didn't do this in Chaos Pierre, for example, though looking back six months later, I'm not sure why I didn't. Chaos Queen doesn't have any mechanics that could potentially punish me for bursting early, since she always starts out on the wrathful face and can't change phases for roughly 40 or so seconds after the fight begins. The next phase we get is Joyous, the one where she'll suck you in. During this phase, I tend to avoid trying to deal damage at all. It's very difficult for a lot of classes to safely get damage out while being vacuumed in. I usually just wait for the face to change. Huh? Now we have the Simmering face, where she'll summon hearts. This is a damage phase for me, always. The hearts aren't dangerous, since you can spam potions. Avoid them as much as you can, spam potions if necessary, and focus down the mirror the second it spawns so you don't get killed. Oh, this is very annoying. These skill locks. The next face is Sorrowful. I bound her immediately upon face change so that she wouldn't summon the red bubble, but this was actually a bad approach. The red bubble only lasts 10 seconds, so it makes a lot more sense to wait it out and start using your burst buffs right before it drops, binding her after the red bubble is gone. This way you'll always be able to do your full burst rotation instead of panic binding and trying to use your burst before the bind wears off. After getting zombified, I use Hero's Will to cleanse it. Get comfortable with Hero's Will. It's not always useful, but you'll be grateful for it when you need it. I got the joyous face again, meaning I can't really do much damage and just have to wait it out. After waiting out another sorrowful phase, Chaos Crimson Queen is dead and we get our rewards. Chaos Queen gives us the pieces of anguish that can then be turned in for the Royal Warrior Helmet. Chaos Von Bon might be the first boss in this game who skill checks you in a way that doesn't feel completely unfair or reliant on RNG. This boss demands that you watch his animations and react accordingly. During most of the fight, clocks will spawn that alter the time remaining depending on which one Von Bon is standing in. Getting him to stand in the dark purple clock will raise the time remaining, so that's where we always want him to be if possible. Though overall, this isn't a mechanic that matters all that much nowadays. 10 minutes is enough for a fairly low stat clear. These clocks eventually stop appearing as Von Bon loses enough HP. Starting out the fight, he'll have two primary attacks, the Staff Whack and the Orb that he fires. The Staff Whack will stun you, but is easy to avoid by just staying outside of his melee range, and the Orb can either be jumped over or ducked under. These are his only two attacks until he reaches about 75% HP, where he'll begin stomping the ground, instantly killing anyone who isn't off the ground when he lands. He'll also start creating shadows of the player at their current location, 
and after a few seconds, the player will be teleported back to that location. This is particularly dangerous when combined with the orb, since it can force you into a position to get hit by it if you don't play carefully. If you find yourself potentially getting hit by the orb because of the recall mechanic, I recommend holding down so that you duck under it when you get recalled. At 40% HP, another mechanic gets introduced. Von Bon will periodically summon a portal that contains a chaos disembodied Von Bon, who must be killed before the real Von Bon will reappear in the normal dimension. If this boss isn't killed quickly enough, everyone in the fight dies. The map that the portal teleports you to is dark and deals constant damage, but without a potion cooldown, this isn't a huge concern. Chaos Disembodied Von Bon has all of Chaos Von Bon's normal attacks, but I'm unsure whether they deal the same damage. You just want to rush in there and take him down as fast as possible. Finally, at around 10% HP, Chaos Von Bon will start teleporting around, summoning a tornado that causes super knockback similar to Magnus's spin slash attack. This can be cancelled with super knockback cancelling skills, which we have an abundance of on Blaster. However, this super knockback attack from Von Bon should simply be avoided instead. This is far easier than trying to resist it, since the hitbox for the super knockback is always active. During this phase, clocks will fall from the sky, dealing percent HP damage based on their color, and that's the Von Bon fight. It's time to take him down. Chaos Von Bon is generally considered a very easy boss. Either Chaos Crimson Queen or Chaos Von Bon are usually the first CRA bosses that people clear, but Queen can be RNG reliant if your damage is low, so I find Von Bon the easier of the two. You'll notice I'm tanking a lot of hits and not dying to things that are normally one-shots. With the damage mitigation from Charge Mastery, I can safely tank all of these as long as I'm in the middle of a charge skill release animation. The reason I didn't take damage from that stomp is due to the state you're put in when bobbing or weaving. You're not technically on the ground while dashing after using one of these skills. Alright, that's that. I deserve that death. That was really bad. I just stood there. As you can see, if you get lazy and sloppy with your play, you can lose lives very fast. This is something to remember when fighting any boss in this game. Focus up and don't play loose. Chaos Von Bon drops the pieces of time that can be turned in for the Eagle Eye Warrior top. We've cleared every boss that makes up the CRA three-door trio, but we still have one major challenge ahead of us. Chaos Vellum There's a reason people refer to the previous three Chaos Root Abyss bosses separately and give Chaos Vellum his own category. Chaos Vellum is the first boss we're fighting who actually has enough defense that IED is something we need to seriously consider. Because of all of the excess sources of IED that I have, I'm going into this fight with 92% IED. This is far higher than I would expect most players to have at this point. You need over 50% IED to even deal any damage at all to Chaos Vellum, with the sweet spot being around 85% IED. This will allow you to deal 70% final damage against him. At 92% IED, I'm dealing 84% final damage, which is more than sufficient for an easy clear. It's hard for me to recommend an IED value for your progression against this boss. I personally wouldn't attempt it with anything under 80% IED though. Just like Three Doors, Vellum doesn't have a potion cooldown. However, the most dangerous attacks from him still deal 100% HP damage, so it's not incredibly impactful. Vellum's attacks are indicated by the yellow circle on the floor. This shows where either his head or his tails will appear next. When Vellum pops out of the ground, he can do one of a few things. He'll either shoot three fireballs, which will deal 100% HP damage, He'll simply appear and then burrow back underground, which will deal 70% HP damage and knock back the player if hit. And after a certain point, he'll unlock a new attack where he lays down poison zones around the map that deal good damage. I'm not even sure how much. Be careful of standing in these poison pools. 
The last thing to mention as far as regular attacks go is the dive attack, indicated by a much larger yellow circle. Getting hit while he's diving deals 100% HP damage. In fact, getting hit while he's burrowing underground is generally something to avoid regardless, since it will likely one-shot you. None of this seems too bad at a glance. The real killer of a Chaos Vellum fight, even for someone as experienced with it as me, are the stalactites that fall from the ceiling, temporarily stunning the player if they get hit by them. These stalactites are always active and can put you in very bad situations very quickly if you're not careful. Alongside the stalactites, in Chaos Mode only, we have to worry about Vellum's tails. These are indicated by the yellow circles on the ground, just like the head, and will deal 100% HP damage if they hit the player. They only spawn when Vellum's head is above ground and will always spawn where the player is standing. This means they can be manipulated if you're careful enough with your movement, but for a beginner, I would recommend simply staying away from them, even if it means you're not attacking the boss for a few seconds. The final attack to watch out for is the laser. A message will appear at the top of the screen that says Vellum is taking a deep breath. He'll pop out of the ground either on the far right or far left side of the screen, and you want to avoid getting hit when he does so since this still deals damage. And he'll spend a few seconds charging up his map-wide laser attack. This deals 1 million damage, but can be iframed. If you're standing directly underneath Vellum when he does this, you won't be hit. Classes with very high mobility will likely never struggle in this phase, but be careful of the stalactites wasting a lot of time if you get hit. That's the Chaos Vellum fight explained, now let's actually do it. You'll notice I click on the altar to summon him and begin buffing for an immediate burst at the same time. Vellum will initially pop his head out once to indicate that he's aware of our presence. He'll burrow back underground and then appear once again. Anytime Chaos Vellum's head is above ground after that initial pop out, he can be bound. When he's underground, he can't be. This is gonna be, this one's gonna be a long fight. When he eventually does the fireball attack, it's a great opportunity to deal damage, but all damage against Chaos Vellum needs to be dealt very meticulously. You shouldn't throw out damage and prioritize it over your survival or you'll die out very quickly. You'll see me sacrifice damage for survival quite a few times throughout this fight. Deal damage when you can, but don't sacrifice your life for it. This is an important lesson for all bosses that Chaos Vellum teaches you. It can be difficult to see the yellow circles on the ground during the poison phase, and this is where experience manipulating tail spawns comes in handy. Knowing where a tail is going to spawn next reduces the amount of visual information that you need to gather. If you're not experienced with this, I recommend just playing very carefully during the poison phase, even more than you would normally. I knew I was going to die to that dude. That sucks ass. And that's Chaos Vellum. Unlike the Three Doors bosses, Chaos Vellum's pieces of destruction require a total of 15 to claim a Fafnir weapon. This almost always means clearing him twice to receive a weapon. I don't think I've ever had enough drop rate to get 15 pieces in one clear. I'm not even sure if it's possible or not. But with Chaos Vellum dead, we're done with Chaos Root Abyss. It was pretty easy overall. A trend we'll begin seeing on this character is just how easy everything is. Blaster is very well equipped to fight bosses, it seems. With our newly acquired permanent CRA set, I wanted to achieve the following on all three items. 12 stars, 9% strength potential, and a flame score of 80 or higher. The epic potential was acquired through Identisk Epot scrolls as well as the Yu Garden Epots, and cubed with mystical cubes that drop from bosses. The flames were rolled with powerful rebirth flames purchased with mesos from the Henesis General Store. 
And that's CRA, as demonstrated by a blaster. We have more fights ahead of us and plenty of challenges to overcome, but this is a huge step in the right direction. After realizing how strong I truly was, I felt confident to take on the next boss in our progression, but that's going to have to wait until next time. Thanks for watching. Before we end this video, I want to give a quick shout out to my supporters on YouTube and Patreon for their continued support. Remix My Life, Maple Ream, Tiago Nascimento, Gummy Bullet, Filamentus, Big Buddy, and Connor Hill for joining at the Togang tier. Velarex, Cast T, Aya Ayung MS, Ayub Idrissi, Lake Tiger, Sam Stundis, and Bone Boy for joining at the Togang Junior tier. If you want to support me, one of the best ways to do so is through Patreon or YouTube membership. You'll get a special role in my Discord server, access to my video schedule and future plans, and exclusive content as well as my eternal thanks for allowing me to do what I love.